All right, welcome to October's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is Champagne Tower. It's a pretty fun problem. So we stack glasses in a pyramid where first row has one glass, second row has two glasses, and so on and so forth. Kind of like Pascal's triangle. Now we're gonna pour some champagne in the first glass. When the topmost glass is full, then the excess liquid will fall equally to the glass immediately to the left and right. So when those glasses become full, then any excess will also pour to the left and right, so on and so forth. Now they're going to give us the amount poured from the top as well as the query row and query glass. These are going to be zero indexed and they want us to return what's the final amount of liquid in that glass. So let's think about this example here. If we had three rows and um, amount of one, two, three, four, if we poured four, like how would that work out? So if we had glasses looking like this, we had three rows, what would happen with the first glass? We have four, right? But only up to one is gonna be able to get stored in here. So that means we have a remaining amount of three and three is gonna equally get poured into both this side and this side. So we can kind of keep track of that inside of a nested list and say, all right, this one's gonna be one. Now pour the rest into the ones on the bottom. So now we have 1.5 and 1.5 down here. Now we can just move on and continue to the next row and say, okay, well, we have 1.5 in this class. Is there any excess? So there is, that's gonna be a 0.5 amount, right? So we'll, or 0.5. And 0.5 is gonna get equally distributed between the row below it and the row um, below to its right as well. So 0.5 divided by two is 0.25. So 0.25 will get down here, 0.25 will get down here. Um, and here it's going to be one. Now on the second glass, it's going to be the same thing, but we are going to add 0.25 to the middle one as well, right? So this one becomes 0.5 and this one becomes 0.25. So really it's pretty straightforward. We just need to simulate this whole pouring process in order. But the way that this would look inside of a list, it'd be kind of like this, right? It would be um, a list of where each row has one more column and and really, um, we don't even once we've poured out the one, we don't even need to really keep track of that afterwards. Like once we've filled it up with one, uh, we can just build up like a new temporary list here and add it to the one um, where the row is just greater, but the index is the same, and the row is plus one, and the index is plus one. All right, so I'll show you what I mean. Um, let's start with creating a list. We'll call it classes. And this is going to start with the very first row with the amount that we have poured. Right? So it's just going to be something like this. Now, for, it uh, doesn't really matter, in range of however many rows we have, we're going to simulate this process. And the way that we'll do that is first we'll create a temporary array. All of these will start with zero. And this is going to just have. Um, the same amount as the row before. So we'll call that glasses, but with one more, so plus one. So we'll have this temporary array and we're gonna now add to this temporary array however much excess liquid there is for each one of our rows inside of glasses. So let's see, four, um, we need to keep track of the index number. So for I in range of glasses, what are we going to do? Let's first calculate how much excess liquid there is. So we'll call that pour and we'll say, all right, from glasses dot I, we're going to first subtract one, which is going to be the uh, largest amount that we can put in this glass and we'll divide it by two. We're going to get a float here. Now, if this poured amount, um, it's possible that it's negative at this point because we might have an amount like 0.5, which becomes minus 0.5, minus 0.25. And obviously that doesn't make sense. So make sure to keep track of and make sure pour is greater than one, um, or not greater than one, I'm sorry, greater than zero. And if it is, we are going to add this amount to our temporary array. And we'll say for temporary i, we'll just add this amount, pour, for temporary i plus one, we're gonna add this amount of pour. 
So once that's finished, make sure to reset the initial glasses as this, not pour, I'm sorry, the temp array, because it's kind of like we're moving down this nested list, but since we don't really care about um, the previous list once we filled it all up, uh, we can just get rid of that and this way we'll save some memory. Okay, so once we do that, all we do is we turn uh, the glasses and since we know we're at the query row, we return the query glass. Now it's possible at this point that we actually have excess. We have like four or five because even though um, the query row is this row, it's possible we still have a lot more poured left. So if that happens, we'll have to get the minimum of one here and just make sure that works. So let's try if we had amount of let's say four, we had three rows and we're looking for the second glass. This should be 0.5. Uh, range of glasses, okay, length of glasses, of course. Oh, okay, I got zero. <laughs> um, what did I do wrong here? Let's see. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Oh, of course, it's zero indexed, right? So, uh, and this will be 0.25 then. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is working. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go, accepted. All right. Um, so this is an, let's see, O of N solution, I believe. No, no well, we don't have, we don't know what N is. So um, it would be, I guess, whatever query row times query glass of solution, um, you know, so let's say N times N uh, time complexity. As far as memory goes, we'll have, uh, I don't know. Okay, what, whatever. This works. <laughs> so we'll just set, end it there. Um, all right. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.